Parades and Changes was the result of five years of expo exploration. Mm. And Larry helped me develop a score. We stopped using the word choreography mm -hmm. because I associated it with somebody who has an idea preconceived already, mm -hmm. and then everybody else conforms to that idea. Mm -hmm. I wanted something more like nature. I wanted mm -hmm. something, and I didn't know what it was, but I wanted something that was flexible, that was creative, that changed with the seasons, with the day, with the people. And uh, Larry helped me uh, uh, define another way of creating together, which he called the RSVP cycles. Now, R stands for collecting resources. Mm. Uh, S stands for creating a score, like uh, a score is, is uh, allows for uh, unexpected input, giving up the idea of choreography and mm -hmm. it, substituting the idea of scoring. Mm. Uh, so as I say, it, it's uh, scores then come from your resources and then you have value action, mm -hmm. which is, well, did this work or didn't it work? And now we go back and collect more resources. Um, but the score has people over time in space with activity. All right, so uh, following a scoring method it allowed for change and flexibility. Mm -hmm. The RSVP cycle, which Larry evolved, is a different way of creating a dance mm -hmm. that allows for uh, input, it allows for total participation, it allows uh, of the people involved, they, the performers invest their own ideas. Um, it puts the, the so-called choreographer, the person that, uh, that is directing it is more like an artistic director mm. with with the uh, the power the empowerment to make choices like a selector yeah uh -huh. I can make choices yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, mm. it, it enables other people to join yeah so I was able to work with musicians with poets with uh, uh, painters with architects uh, the lighting man so it's non-hierarchical. I mean, basically, what you're saying you it got that, it. Yeah, that yeah. was very okay. important yeah. to me that yeah. it's non-hierarchical. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, parades and changes uh, was the result of that kind of collaboration. Now, what you didn't see was that we never did that dance the same way twice. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Uh, if we would go into a particular theater, uh, like we did in Sweden, for example. We would be up until four or five in the morning reorganizing the, uh, the dance. For example, the lighting man had cards of different act activities in the way of lighting. The musician had cards with different ideas for music. Everybody had a set of cards, cards that went in this direction. Now, when we go into a new environment, we might have to scramble those cards right. up because it was no longer viable in that particular environment. Like at the opera house, everything, all the audience was like this, and only a few people on the floor. Well, you had to change because right. the environment was so different. So it was a wonderful, flexible score. Also, mm -hmm. we never had the same cast. I never had the same I'm cast. I'm a costume designer. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being... No, 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 you're being you're great. So. Uh, the first time we did it, we did it in uh, Sweden. And now Sweden has a very different idea about nudity. Uh -huh. what, the, what was their idea? Yeah, it's acceptable. Uh -huh. okay. so they they go care. to the beach, it's acceptable. They didn't care. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I got a beautiful letter from a farmer who saw it on television. Can you imagine the use of oh my nudity no. on their public television? And I got this letter from a farmer who said the naked bodies were like my newborn calves, sacred and pure. Mm -hmm. And in America, uh, the no pants dancers return and an arrest. Oh, that's what they call oh, it? Oh yeah, the no pants dancers return. Oh. Headlines in the Chronicle. And in New York, uh, we were arrested. So, we, uh, you know, in a way, we were totally innocent. It, it, we didn't even think about nudity as some kind of sexual tintillation. No. It was an extension of nature. The body is so beautiful when it's naked and the lights on, on the, the skin is so beautiful. 
that all I was thinking about was, this is art. Absolutely. This is just visual art, just beautiful. And uh, so it just seems so natural to us. Uh, and in, uh, in, in this particular cast, uh, it was a little bit like, uh, Picasso's circus family mm -hmm. where you have people of different generations the children and the adults because I had uh, both my children in it and we were all different ages I was the oldest and I think I was in my 40s at the time and uh, John and A were in their 30s and then I had the children so it was like a circus family and it was on public television everything was fine until I got to New York now by the time I got to New York it was a different cast so the dance changed again. Mm -hmm. I had all hippies, mm -hmm. beautiful young hippies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dance changed. The new, new ideas were entered, new cards were entered. Um, so every time we did it, it seemed to come at a different time in, in, in my history. And so it changed. So when you saw it, it was done by a French group. Right. But you see, what I love about what you're saying is that the that a, a piece of art is a living piece of it's a living piece. It should breathe. It should change. Mm -hmm. It should reconstitute itself and not be trapped in a in a in a in a box right. of repetition. But I want to ask you something. The um, the first moment is where the dancers are facing the audience, and there's this very slow shifting of the opening of the clothes mm -hmm. and the audience and and I thought when I was sitting there I was thinking a little bit of the Rite of Spring when uh, when Nijinsky's choreography came with the feet on the floor and the opposite of ballet position I mean in the sense of the opposite of what we usually see mm -hmm. of this this looking at the audience and this very deliberate uh, taking of the clothes and I just loved in the documentary breath made visible that that motif was there all the time because it describes you <laughs> and to me i mean the bearing of this of, of of a certain a certain veracity a certain sense of truth and a, and a way of loving the body mm -hmm. and of admiring it as 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 extraordinary and so that that moment that whole moment of that and the the gaze at the audience and the 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 bodies are not perfect mm -hmm. in other words there's little this a little that a little mm -hmm. you know this and that and not ex you know what you would mm -hmm. see and so i guess i'm the the first of all the shapes of the clothes and then the naked body mm -hmm. was so stunning mm -hmm. and so I, I i mean was there can you comment on that at all i mean on how that first moment you know happens yeah. you know with can, yeah uh first of all i started using what i called task oriented movement mm. as a way of trying to break through stylized movement because mm. i felt that stylized movement sort of became armor to to, mm -hmm. to your emotional state mm -hmm. and so the idea of dressing and undressing was a very ta much a task movement yeah. it's an ordinary movement mm -hmm. but it's not enough just to do an ordinary movement so how could I shape an ordinary movement so people could relate to it? Oh, yeah, they're dressing, undressing. They didn't have to guess, well, what is this all about? Right. It's about dressing and undressing. Yes. And it's about... <laughs> it's very about, simple. It's very simple. And, and all we do is change the rhythm, change our internal intention, and people can relate to that. Now, I, I, I like the idea of taking the clothes off because they had uh, their original costumes were a suit and tie and a mm -hmm. white shirt mm -hmm. and it was androgynous mm -hmm. that was another statement mm -hmm. that the, 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 the men and the women wore exactly the same mm -hmm. suit black suit white shirt uh, I don't think we had a tie but um, I'm I don't so remember. so it, 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 it was an ordinary movement and it was just uh, it came to me because dancing outdoors on our dance deck it's just so lovely to be naked and feel the sun and the wind and uh, and and so it, it came from that appreciation 
and it was not self-conscious. I had no idea people oh, were going to react the way they did. It, it was a complete surprise to me. Well, also the issue of the the gaze of the performer, of you know, yeah. gazing at the audience in this very neutral way. Yeah. So it wasn't seductive. It wasn't yeah. you know anything yeah. like that. But it was just neutral, and it was so powerful. And the other. Um, the other element that I was so appreciative of was the use of the shapes. Mm -hmm. The combination of shapes that, um, that, that began to become assembled in the, in the, uh, in the, I mean, that's why it's so hard to define. In the paper? No, I'm not yeah. at the paper yet. I'm in the, I'm yeah. in the parade part. I'm uh -huh. in the, all of the different uh, uh -huh. headdresses and uh -huh. this, that, and the other uh -huh. thing, and all the collection of shapes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and again, what I would call divine ordinariness. I mean, something that you would see, you know, a little this, a little boot, you know, or this. Well, that, or that has an interesting I mean, history. Fabulous. That has a very interesting history. We were doing parades and changes in Europe, and one of the places we were going to go to was Poland. Mm. They were having a festival, and I got a note from the director. Uh, who read about parades and changes when we did it in Sweden. And he said, if you use nudity on stage in Poland, I will lose my job. And I thought, oh my God, uh, what am I gonna do? That's an important part of the dance. So you know what I did? I said, okay, if we can't take our clothes off, we'll put clothes on. <laughs> that's how it came about. So we started collecting, you know, tires. Oh, so, and that's how you did that's it. That's how I did it. So we started collecting on our way, you know, we'd go get tires and bird cages and funny hats. And, and we, we'd go to these uh, secondhand stores and just pick up these odd things. Well, you see, that's a true artist. A true <laughs> artist is an opportunist. That, that no matter what it is, you see, and here again is the concurrency with Isadora. Uh -huh. Isadora persevered. Yeah. She was never defeated. I mean, she, you know, yeah. the kids drowned. I mean, there were all oh, kinds yeah. of tragedies. But she, the, she was determined. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you could turn uh, a lemon into lemonade, you know, however <laughs> you want to say that. But I mean, and, and I mean, the, the incongruity of those shapes. I mean, what kind of mind would put those together? I mean, it was just... And then the kind of mind... We have to talk about the brown wrapping paper. Where's that picture? I mean, that is just so, we have to get everybody to see this. This was amazing. 